Thanks for checking out this movie review. This is for the 1973 film The Baby, and this is a, do a doozy. Um, first thing, just want to let people know up front, there will be spoilers for this. It's an older movie. This, that's what I'm doing. This, there will be spoilers. So I would say uh, my quick recommendation, if you like movies that are not good but are kind of crazy, wacky, nutty, um, and are kind of like, what am I watching? What the hell by the end? Turn around, go watch it, then come back and watch the remainder of this video because lots of spoilers. It's something. <laughs> anyway, so it's actually fitting because I was watching this at night and then I was like, I'll just record the review of it another day, like the next day or whatever. And I was just like, no, you know what? Now's the time. Now that it's fresh on my mind, I can give the best reaction possible to this because, okay. Um, so it's fitting. I'm actually wearing my pajamas and this is the baby. Obviously it's about a giant man baby. Uh, this guy who's basically kept as a, as a infant by his mother and sisters. And there's all sorts of other wacky stuff, but we'll talk more about that as we go on. This is currently streaming on Shudder when this review is going up, so you can check it out there. Uh, it's weird because the, the film feels like it's not horror until like the very, very end. I mean, it's wacky and weird and to some people just the premise of the whole man baby thing is kind of horrific but um that's not really horror in my opinion it's just kind of like odd and uncomfortable but the actual horror stuff comes at the end so i'm like oh, okay there it is so let's talk about some background stuff on this not a whole lot uh, it was directed by a man named ted post now i can't really figure out why ted post took this job unless he was offered a lot of money or he was connected with someone who wanted this film made i don't know uh because this guy actually had directed a lot of tv had directed some movies too he had a lot of directing credits on imdb so he did um he did a bunch of stuff he did a, the film beneath the planet of the apes uh, he did 56 episodes of the show Gunsmoke, and he did 24 episodes of the show Rawhide, and he even did four episodes of The Twilight Zone. So this guy, like, had a pedigree, like, he could direct. And you can see it in this film, like, there's legitimately good directing in this film. It's just, it's a nutty film. Like, the script is insane. Who greenlit this stuff? Well, I, I guess I understand. It. Like, it was produced by the guy who wrote it and someone else with the same last name. So I assume it was a family member. So I assume the guy who wrote it had the money and was like, I wrote this script. I've got all this money. We need to make this crazy film. And this Ted Post guy was just like, I like money. Let's do it. <laughs> you know, like that's my best interpretation of probably what happened. So uh, it was written by a man named Abe Polsky, and other than that, he did not write a whole lot. I think he wrote like a TV episode of something here or there, but uh, not much. So it, it came out, obviously it came out in 1973, and then it came out on VHS and DVD in 2000. Yeah, VHS, VHS was still being made in 2000. That's a weird thing that popped up for me. I was like, really? We're still doing VHS in 2000? And I was really thought about it, and I'm like... Yep, that's correct, because I do remember still buying VHS at that point. Uh, and then in 2011, it came out in DVD again, and Blu-ray this time through Severin Films. Now, Severin has a lot of fun stuff. Uh, that's where I'd done a review for the Blu-ray they put out of uh, Invasion of the Blood Farmers, which is another movie that's just like, it's, it's a terrible movie, but it's like fun, terrible, and the baby is kind of that way in my opinion, so... Um, I don't know if this has rewatch value to me unless I'm showing it to another person and being like, watch this wacky thing. You'll never believe it. Uh, <laughs> but other than that, I don't think I'm going to like rewatch it by myself or anything, but I'm glad I saw it because it's, it's nuts and I can tell people about it. Uh, okay. So the beginning of this with the photos already feels weird. Like the way that Anne's character is like looking at these photos and her mother is like kind of hanging over her and looking at these photos you get the sense that there's something very off about that scene, but it doesn't really start to click until much later in the film. Well, like when the kidnapping actually happens and then, you know, babies being, it doesn't even have a name, babies being kept at Anne's house and you're just kind of like, there's something else going on here. And then you start thinking back to the weird photo thing and you're like, oh, there is something else going on here. And then you find out in the end, there is something else going on here and it's wacky. 
But anyway, we'll talk about that a little bit later. So it's odd that this uh, social worker was so interested in, in feeding the baby, um, the man baby. Like, that that's your first indicator with this film. But, well, okay, beyond the photo thing, because that, you know, that could be anything, to be honest. That could just be an awkwardly set up scene. But her enthusiasm with wanting to meet the baby and feed the baby is like, that's your biggest indicator there. You're just like, this woman's not right like there's something else going on here nobody would be that excited to meet a man baby and then even more so feed the man baby like maybe meet the man baby to just be like is this a real thing i need to find this out and then meet him and be like yep that's a thing well i'm gonna go tell people i know um not like oh now let me feed the man baby <laughs> so it's just like it's weird man um as soon as it's said one of the previous workers disappeared you feel like, oh my gosh, something's up. But that ends up actually not turning into anything, really. Because you, it's good, though, because putting that in there like gives you the sense that, like, oh, this family really didn't want people to getting too close to the baby. And you see that with how the mom reacts with Anne. And so you just get this feeling like they're overly protective, and it's because they would murder people. And they kind of like show that intent a little bit when they... Uh, tie up Anne and leave her in the basement. So, like, maybe they would have killed Anne. I don't know. Um, we don't know. But it, it is kind of a good, like, red herring in the beginning when they're kind of like, oh, this one social worker just disappeared. Because then it makes you think, yup, the family murdered her. But then we don't come back to it. So, I mean, maybe that happened, but maybe very well may not have happened. We don't know. Um, so, one of the things that occurred to me is uh, the guy who played Baby... His name is uh, David Mooney. Yeah, the guy who played Baby. Um, first of all, I don't know how you audition for that. Second of all, I don't know why you would audition for that. Third of all, I don't know how you get work after that. <laughs> Fourth of all, I think he did a good job for what the role was, <laughs> to be honest. Like, really think about what he had to do and what the role specifications probably were. And he, I think he did a good job. It seems weird to say but he did a good job. Um, I just, I don't think I could do that. Like, not that I wouldn't have the chops necessarily is what I'm saying. It's just like, I just, I wouldn't want to It'd have to be a lot of money involved, but um, yeah. So I don't know. Like this, this movie kind of like throws me off from time to time, but the way he plays with things in this, he's like, he is like a dog. Like there's a lot of things. that's like dog, like like the way he plays with things and then at the one point when Anne's trying to, like, get him out of the house after she'd been tied up. And she's, like, leading him by, like, the collar of his shirt. And you're just like, yeah, like a dog again. And he's just, like, crawling around. It's, it's crazy. Um, the scene with the babysitter giving in to the baby and feeding him was totally out of nowhere. It's, I mean, for the character. Like, the babysitter... With, with the short hair, like, towards the beginning where she where he, like, tried to, like, start suckling, sucking on her boob. And she's just like, no, no, baby, no. And then she's just like, uh, okay. And you're just like, wait, what? <laughs> like, no, 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 no. At no point did it seem like she would even be close to open to that idea. And then she does it, and it's like there's this weird sexual uh, connotation to it. And you're just like, what? And it's... I don't know. It's confusing. Like, this film's confusing. Like, I, I was all over the place watching this. I was just like, ugh, ugh. I'm like, I don't know how to feel right now. Like, this is really messed up, but it's also, like, kind of entertaining. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Woo. Then the cattle prod. Oh, my gosh. Like, the cattle prod coming out of nowhere because they just said, like, oh, how do you discipline baby? And they're like, oh, you know, he gets a spanking. And then later you find out that, like, the sister's, like, jabbing him with a cattle prod. But then what's even worse than the use of the cattle prod in this point is the response that the other sister and the mom have when they find her doing the cattle prod on baby. They're just like, oh, no, don't do that. Like, that's the equivalent of their response. It's not like, oh, my gosh, what are you doing? It's, oh, no, don't do that. That's that's a little too much. It's like, uh, okay. So we reached a new new level, though, when the one sister, I think her name was Linda, crawl like drops down her like negligee and crawls into bed with baby at night and you don't see anything obviously but it's like it's it's heavily implied by the way that was shot 
that she's having sex with him or at least molesting him i don't know it is it, it's nuts like i feel like especially for 1973 like this movie crosses so many lines in so many weird ways that like i understand why it wasn't a big thing then and why it has now become a cult classic because a lot of people are kind of like pulling up all like the schlocky movies and just like the the old terrible movies that people are like oh my god look at how funny that it is because this is so bad and this definitely like fits into that um you definitely see how controlling the mo the mother is uh not just because of how she reacts with baby but also because of the fact that her daughters are like always right by her side like it seems like they don't do anything without her pretty much unless they are staying at the house because she's going somewhere else and so yeah so that they did a good job of like kind of showing how closely knit that family is well not closely knit more like controlled by the mother so um the guy dennis at the party so the house party scene where it's a birthday party for baby when that guy dennis starts to hit on ann I wrote down, this guy comes on to women like a serial killer. At first, he makes a comment about, like, oh, you have beautiful skin. First of all, that's a serial killer come on. And then he's just like, oh, are you alone? And he, he doesn't say, like, oh, did you come here with anyone or something? He's like, are you alone? And then later on, even when he's, like, getting on with, I think her name was Alba, he was, like, they start having this, like, weird metaphor conversation. And he's like, oh, does a cannibal like meat? And it's just like, dude, the skin, the are you alone, and the cannibal stuff, like, you're a psycho, man. Weird character. Uh, the dancing at the birthday party looks like people were having seizures, by the way. Uh, particularly the mother, Mrs. Wadsworth, and the, the older gentleman that she grabbed onto the dance floor. Those two, in particular, were like, looked like they were having seizures on the dance floor. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, one of the things that occurred to me at that point, well, first of all, like that whole the, like party scene and the dance scene, like went on way too long. You're just like, why are we still doing this? Like, there's not enough going on during this to yeah, necessitate the party being this long or us sticking with the party that long. But during that, when the, you know, they're doing all the stuff in the basement and they tied up Ann and everything. And then baby goes down there. The part where like baby knocks the food, the jar of food off the shelf and it I believe it breaks. And then it, it, a little bit later, you see like babies like eating it. Wouldn't baby be eating glass at that point? <laughs> like, and then Anne's not even saying anything about it. She's just like, I mean, I understand she's like concerned about getting herself untied. But at the same time, I would think she was so concerned about baby, especially from what you see in the end, that she'd be like, don't eat glass. Don't do that. Crazy. Um, and I wrote down, Anne would need an insane amount of time and resources to teach baby to be a grown adult. Once she gets him to her house, she's just like, I'm going to make him big again. And so, I, I mean, you find out that that's basically like a ruse. But the fact that she kind of presents that to the mother, to Mrs. Wadsworth and the sisters, and they're like believing it. They're like, oh my God, she's going to make him a grown man in like a day or two. It's not even possible, but you find out that, like, that's not her intent. She's just going to keep him a baby, basically. Ugh. Um, did I miss something, or how did they find out where Anne lives? Because the mom and, and, and daughters show up. I, I feel like there was nothing saying, like, how they found out where she lives, and so it was just kind of really random. Uh, they really drag it. Speaking about dragging out scenes, like, I was talking about the party scene being totally drug out the like break-in scene with the daughters going in and then eventually the mother like that was really long and drawn out and it just took all the interest and fun out of it to be honest and then even when you get to the part where it's more interesting where like the, the daughters get killed and then she's fighting the mom actually Anne and her mother are fighting mrs wad mrs wad wadsworth um, like that's supposed to be exciting parts and it's a little bit exciting at times, but then it, that also gets dragged on a little too much. Plus everything with the break in leading up to it took way too long. It's just like, it's kind of boring, like for the end of it and for it coming to this like big crescendo, it's pretty boring to be honest. I was just like, mm -hmm. um, and then the ending happened and I said to myself, I actually wrote down, well, that's one way to end the film. <laughs> Like, the part where, so I, like, I was totally with it. 
the part where like she you know rolls the bodies into the hole and then eventually you find out it was you know they're gonna put a uh, pool on there which the people doing the pool wouldn't they come back and be like oh why did you fill in part of this hole that we dug don't you think they would be a little suspicious about that anyway plot holes um whatever i don't i don't think it matters for the script but um yeah so it's just a nuts ending because then you're just like wait what so she basically her husband had i guess had some sort of like brain trauma and he's reverted to being a child so then she wanted a play a, a play partner for him it's how do you come up with this like that's the thing like i started thinking i'm just like like my mind was blown i'm just like how do you come up with this concept how i don't get it i can feel like it would make more sense nowadays people coming up with that concept because we've done so much with film at this point that there aren't that many like you know original ideas so if someone's going to come up with an original idea it's going to be out there most likely but for back in the 70s there was a lot of other things you could do how did you come up with this abe abe polsky uh and then in the the very end when you see like the whole family together i was just thinking i was just like i don't really like it's hard to tell i don't know who's worse in this situation was baby worse off where he was initially or is he worse off in the end i mean i guess if you just look at the aspect of baby baby's probably better off where he is in the end but if you look at who's worse i guess Anne is and her mother are worse because they murdered people i mean there was intent potentially intended murder murder with mrs wadsworth and her daughters but there was actual murder with Anne and her mother <laughs> so <laughs> it's crazy i want to know what other people's thoughts are on this please comment down there <laughs> um I wrote down, like, the directing's actually solid in this. There's no problem with the directing. The music's actually pretty solid at times. There's some really good cello work in the in the soundtrack at certain points, too, that I took note of. I was just like, oh, this seems oddly inspired for a film like this. Um, so the guy, David Mooney, who played Baby, like I said, he did a good job for the role. He actually did get a few small roles after that. Um, not a whole lot, but he got a few small roles. And then I started thinking, like, did he refer to this movie to get other jobs? He was just like, check out my reel. I was in this movie called The Baby, and I played a man baby. So, yeah. <laughs> check that out. Um, I actually liked Ruth Roman's performance. She's the woman who played Mrs. Wadsworth. I thought she had the strongest performance of anyone in the film, and I actually thought that she should be in actual films like she should be in other films other than this and maybe her talent was kind of wasted um you know i didn't look up to see if she did other stuff but hopefully she did because she was good but i have to say on the other end you have anjanette comer who was ann and i wrote down uh she was too aggressive and odd with her line delivery it's like she's trying to push words through her mouth like it's hard to do yeah, there were many times where she was just like, it felt like she was just like trying to like force things out of her mouth with her lines. And it was kind of like anxiety inducing to watch her act. Because I was just like, don't hurt yourself. <laughs> it's just crazy. Um, if you know what I'm talking, like, if you've seen it, I hope you know what I'm talking about. If you don't, go back and watch at least a little bit of it, like some of her portions, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Like, it's it's so like it's crazy it's like i i mean i i described it the best i can it's like she's trying to force words out of her mouth and her mouth isn't cooperating it's nuts it's very weird okay so anyway um that's all i have to say about the film obviously it's insane uh i want i definitely want to hear comments on other people who have seen it like i gotta know what other people think about this film um so star rating's kind of tricky so i'm gonna do it the two ways like i like to do with bad films that are kind of fun so in in uh the first rating is out of five stars with half stars in play and it is based on all films like in the pantheon of film uh one star yeah one star maybe i'm between one and one and a half but i'm gonna go with the one okay 
now rating it on the scale of just like bad movies that are like fun bad Ooh, I'm gonna give it a two and a half because it's worth seeing once but I don't think I want to see it after that and it's really out there and there's some fun in that but I don't want to go back to it and like I kind of enjoyed it but I kind of also did not enjoy it so it's just so I feel like two and a half is perfect because it's you know, smack dab in the middle of it, so. But anyway, yeah, I hope I don't have nightmares tonight, because it's, it's a little bit nightmare-inducing how weird it is. But anyway, thank you people for checking out this review. I'm, like I said, very interested to see what comments I get on this one. Um, you can give a thumbs up if you want to, but the big thing is, please hit that subscribe for me. It's your, it's your way to repay me. At least repay me for watching this movie, if nothing else. <laughs> but... It takes you literally a second, and it can mean a lot for my channel, so I would appreciate that. But anyway, thanks for checking it out, and until next time, keep it brutal.